Okay, so let's solve another example. This time I have a common source amplifier that looks like this, but then instead of the, having a resistor here, I actually have a current source, right? And it's, let's say, DC current source. Let's call that IT, okay? Um, the question is asking me that we sh I should consider the channel length modulation, so lambda is greater than zero, so I'm going to have an R0. And then also it's asking me that, it, that what is the gain? And also, how does this gain change it changes with uh, increasing L or decreasing L, right? The channel length, right? Um, and the hint that I've given, I've been given, is that the MOSFET current doesn't change if I actually change this length, right? Simply because, well, the MOSFET current is actually set by this ideal current source, and well, ideal current sources are going to have the same current no matter what. So whatever happens to this transistor, the current is has to be always constant. Okay. By the way, uh, this is another way of actually biasing MOSFET transistors. So up to now, we've learned that we should set the gate voltage, and then the gate voltage is going to set the current here, in a, like using that quadratic equation. Let's write that, write it again. So ID was 1 over 2, mu n, C ox, W over L, VGS minus VTH squared. So up to now, we've learned that we can set the VGS or V gate. And then, well, since all these parameters are actually constant, I can actually set the ID accordingly, right? Well, you can see that the other way is also valid. So I can set the ID and then ID sets what should be the voltage at the gate, okay? Now, since I need the gain, uh, the first step is obvious. I have to do the small signal analysis. So V in is gonna be some signal source connected to the gate of the transistor. I have a gap at the gate, I'm going to call that VGS. And then on the other side, I have this voltage controlled current source, which is GM VGS. And now here I don't have, a, well, because I have channel of modulation, I do have a R0. Uh, by the way, source is ground. And I have an R0 that is going from, well, drain to source. Source is ground, so I'm going to connect the R0 to ground, right? And then what do I have instead of the current source? Well, I remember from all kind of discussions that I've had, either BJT or MOSFET, when I go from DC to small signal, I have to turn off all my DC sources. So if, the, if I'm talking about the voltage DC source, it becomes a short circuit. If I'm talking about the current DC source, it becomes an open circuit, right? So here, my current source becomes just an open circuit. Okay, I could have just not drawn uh, I could have not drawn it, uh, but I did it just because I wanted you guys to know that there is something here, but it's not going to be affecting our circuit, okay, or our performance. So, and this is going to be V out. Now, this circuit looks pretty much identical to the small signal circuit of a basic uh, common source amplifier, except that over there we had RD, now we have R0. So, if the gain over there was negative GMRD, you can imagine that the gain here, the V out over V in, is going to be negative GM or not. Okay? And that's pretty much it. So that's the gain equation that we wanted to calculate. Now, for the second part of the question, it says, how does it change with L? Right? Let's say I say, well, L increases. How does this gain changes? Well, to analyze that, I have to see, first of all, how does GM changes if I'm increasing L? Right? And I have to keep in mind, so the question is that if, let's say, L goes up, what happens to GM? And I have to remember that ID is constant. Why? Because, again, let's look at this equation again. If L increases, it could actually change ID, right? But because the ID is constant, because I have a current source here, if I had a voltage source at the gate, changing L could have changed ID. But then because I have a current source here, ID cannot change. So when, it, when I'm changing L and ID is constant, it means that the transistor or the circuit somehow automatically changed the VGS accordingly to keep the ID constant. Meaning that if I'm increasing L, ID wants to be smaller, so VGS increases to keep the ID constant. So because ID is setting VG, and there's no kind of like nothing forcing VG to be a specific value, I can see that, well, the circuit is going to basically adjust itself, right? So if I'm increasing L, uh, again, ID wants to become smaller, but then VGS uh, 
increases to keep the ID constant. If I'm decreasing L, ID wants to be larger, but VGS could be decreased so that ID is constant. So it means that if I'm going to actually analyze the effect of L on GM, I have to make sure that I have ID in the equation, right? So I'm not going to be using this, this expression simply because it doesn't have any L in it, right? So I, I either want to look at this, or look at the first one or the second one, right? I'm going to go with the first one simply because it has both ID and L in it, right? So I can see that I can keep ID constant and then see the, the effect of L over GM. But then for this one, I don't have an ID here. So I'm, if I'm changing L, I don't know if, I, if ID is constant or not, right? And then you can see there's a big difference between them. Here, L is inversely proportional to GM. However, here, if I'm actually increasing L, GM does decrease, but then with a the root square kind of a, a proportionality, right? So this is the most, like this, this is the importance of choosing the right equation or right expression for GM, okay? So looking at this expression again, the first one, I can see that if I decrease, uh, if I increase L, GM goes down by a factor of root 2. Okay, so the answer to this question is going to be uh, GM. So let's actually write it from the beginning. So if L is multiplied by 2, GM is divided by root 2. Okay, so now the question is that are we done? Meaning that, well, does this mean that my gain is going to be divided by root 2 or there's something else to be looked at? And I want you guys to actually pause the video and think about it and then resume and then look at, like, basically hear my discussions. Um, I'm hoping that you all did pause the video and I'm hoping that you have thought about it. And I'm hoping that you all remember that this R0 is actually 1 over lambda ID. ID is constant, but then we also talked about this lambda, this channel length modulation coefficient that is proportional to 1 over L, meaning that R0 is actually proportional to uh, L over ID. What does this tell me? It tells me that when L is actually multiplied by 2, yes, GM is divided by root 2, but R0 is actually multiplied by 2. Therefore, based on these two, I can say that the gain is actually multiplied by root 2 because it's 2 over root 2, so you get a root, root 2 in the numerator. I hope this made some sense. Okay, now that we have seen the two cases, uh, let's put them side by side and then try to have a little bit of discussion about like basically how do they compare and what is the disadvantage and advantage of each of them. So let's write the gain again. So for the one, uh, for the common source amplifier with the resistor, we got from slide 5 that V out over V in or AV it's really equal to negative gm times rd and then we wrote rewrote the gm as 2 mu n c ox w over l um, id times rd and on the other side for this one well gain was much simpler it was negative gm times r naught okay now um, we had this discussion about the transistor, the, the common source amplifier with the resistive load, and we saw that, okay, so the gain is this much. Uh, the advantage of this circuit is that I have a very good control on the DC voltage of this V out, right? I know that this V out, which is also my VDS, right? Which I like it to be greater than VGS minus VTH to be in the saturation region. I know that my VDS is equal to VDD minus RDID. So by setting RD and ID, I can actually perfectly set the DC voltage at the V out. What was the problem with this amplifier? Well, anytime that I wanted to actually increase the gain, I had to increase ID or R, ID or RD or even W over L. For some of them, I actually had the cost of power consumption, but more importantly, or well, um, the other aspect of it would be if I increase RD or ID, and uh, that, that will result in RDID to be increased. This means that the VDS that is equal to this is going to be decreased, right? This term increasing, there's a negative sign behind it. So VDS is actually decreasing. If VDS is going down at some point, I'm getting closer and closer to triode. 
and at some point I'm going to go to try it. So I couldn't actually increase the gain as much as I wanted, or there was an upper limit to how much I can actually I can increase the gain. However, on the other side, I know that by definition, a current source, an ideal current source, uh, the voltage across this element is not really is not really dependent on the value of its current. So the value of my current source could be one milliamp or ten milliamp or one amp, and the voltage across it, as long as it's a it's an ideal current source, the voltage across it has nothing to do with the value of the current. This means that I can I can easily increase my GM and R0, whatever rate that I want, and I don't really have to be worried if my transistor is going to go into triad region. So um, this is, we can say, almost saturation proof. So we don't have to worry too much about going uh, or tr actually try it proof. So we can say that it's always in saturation. It never goes to try it. So that's the main benefit of this circuit. But then the, the big problem is really coming from the advantage itself. So because of the exact fact that uh, VCS, the voltage across this current source, is not really dependent on the, on the current of this current source, I really don't have any idea of what is this V out, the DC value of this V out. Most of the time, I don't really care as much as, as long as I have the transistor biased in the, with the current that I have or in the current that I want, and I'm getting a good gain out of my amplifier, I don't care what is the DC value at the output. But sometimes I do. Um, it's beyond the, the scope of this course, but then it actually, um, I like it to be somewhere between, uh, if you think about it, if this is 1.8 and this is zero, I like it to be somewhere in the mid range because, well, at the end of the day, I'm gonna have a sinusoidal here. And if I'm like, if this DC is set to 1.7 or 1.75, then it means that I, I can't really go up by much before reaching to that 1.8 and getting clipped off, right? So. In a sense, I do need to somehow set this voltage, but there are other ways to do this that you will learn in more advanced courses. The big advantage of this circuit on the right compared to the circuit on the left is it's basically we can actually increase the gain without being worried too much about going to saturation. And the big question that I left you guys with last week at the end of our uh, Thursday lecture was, now, I know that this current source seems to be a really good deal and it, it gives us a really good amplifier, but then how do I actually make this current source, this ideal current source? Because, well, it's a current source similar to a battery that I had and I didn't want to have a battery to bias every circuit or every transistor. I don't want to have an ideal current source uh, for every transistor. I have to be able to somehow generate it using the elements that I have on the chip. So that's the question that we're going to answer uh, starting next slide.